But I think it's about time as we've got over 70 people here. Amazing, great turnout um, to introduce our special guest. It is Fun Master Mike, a.k.a. Well, known to me, at least, because I and uh, Mike and I go way back as um, Mike Klein. And he is the, the voice of Chess Kids. Some of you are um, already uh, teenagers, but a lot of you are right there in the Chess Kid age range. And those of you who aren't now, I bet you can remember um, Fun Master Mike's voice ringing in your ears for many years as my four-year-old son is enjoying right now. So, Mike, it's so great that you were able to spend time with us. One reason I should mention is that we are working on this tournament together, the April 17th Chess Kid Women's and Girls event. So we're going to talk about that a little <laughs> bit as well. But before that, we have a very exciting um, chess competition for them. You want to tell us a little bit about it? It's going to be fun. Hi, Sarah. I see you with your hand up. It's good to see you again. I'm so happy to be here, and I feel very honored that I'm one of the few boys allowed in the girls' treehouse. No Calvin and Hobbes references. I'm very delighted that there are so many girls. And what an incredible time to be alive. Jen and I did know each other from childhood. But back then, I had to buy her lunch just to hang out with her. And you guys get to hang out with her for free all the time. Um, in any case, this is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a girls-themed Kahoot trivia challenge. Now, don't worry if you've never played Kahoot before, because I'm hosting for the first time. So I'll probably make more mistakes than you will. But I have one of the best tactics from each of the 17 women's world champions. So you're going to learn all their names today in order, and you're going to see what I consider their best move of all time. Okay. Now, Jen is going to be the 18th world champion when uh, she gets in gear, right, Jen, when that commentary career dies down. But uh, I think almost everyone's ready. All you need to do is go to kahoot.it, type in that pin number 413-3001, no spaces. And uh, pick a name that is friendly. I think everybody's done that. Okay. Um, all right. So hello to Gaia and Charmy and Fencer Girl. Don't stab me. Uh, and Samara and Presley and Tori. And I think I'm ready. Jen, uh, we don't need to do any more intro. We can just get going, right? Okay. Oh, I think we're ready. The prize? I, I'm sorry. Did you tell them the prize? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. So the winning score actually gets to play me in a live game on Chess Kid at the end of our show. And you get to ask me questions too. Anybody can ask me questions. By the way, each question on Kahoot, you have one minute to answer it. And Kahoot does give you more points if you answer it quickly, but you get no points if you get it wrong. So much like chess, there's a time management thing in there, but just do your best. Um, we all know that's what chess is all about. Okay, I'm gonna click the start button. Unfortunately, one girl left. They couldn't wait to start and decided to go have ice cream. I don't know. 63, come on, if we get 64, click the start button. Call on, oh, grown ups are welcome. I, I know we had a couple of grown ups in here, so you all, you all are welcome. Um, I got Caitlin in here. I see Stacy. There's 64 players. 64, we did it. We did it. Yeah. We did. And oh, Liliana brings up a good point. If you don't know, definitely guess. Okay, you can't get points off. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to click the start button. Three, two, one. Anna has one final bite to get some energy. And here we go. Best moves of the world champions. Okay, now you're entering the answer on your screen. Here's question one. Very mentioned. First world, women's world champion of chess. White to move. Hopefully that's big enough for you. I don't think I can make it any bigger. The white to move in this position. And your four choices are there. They're color coded. All right. Sharia said she knows this. Theory oh. says you chose the wrong one. Don't put the answers in chat or I'll have to make the chat private though, okay? It's, and I don't like to do that because it's fun to keep it open. Yeah, but you can type he, like, this one's hard or I got this yeah. one, but don't put, in, don't put in the actual answer. Yeah, and you know, I honestly, I do usually keep the chat open. I might. And it's, it's touch move. Once you enter your answer, Kahoot's like, you can't do a take back, okay? So, ooh. We had a lot of people going for H6 check, but knight F5 was the Vera Minchik move. And I believe, Jen, that this game, although maybe a different part of the game, has been focused on in your girls club in the past. Is that right? 
That's right. Very recently, in fact. Does anybody remember the instructor who talked about this very game? Tell us. Yes, I can, Annika. I can send you the code. I, I'm going to keep copy pasting that. Um, but can somebody tell me who mentioned that in her recent Katarina. class? Yes, Sujana and Siri and Sarah and Annika, Katarina Nemkova. That's right. Beautiful. And I'm going to um, tell you all a little secret. Katarina Nemsova is going to be the Czech Fun Master Mike. She's actually translating the website into Czech and she's going to voice all my videos. So if any of you out there speak Czech, I don't think that's very many of you, um, you'll be able to see theaters. Okay. Now, um, Jen, can you lead me to what move number? Um, yeah, sure. Um, let me see. I have that open on my other screen. And it looks like our second position is move 13 white. And actually, I can't even see the move numbers here, but oh, I do. No, for, for this one, it's 18 white. The, the, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Actually, you know, this isn't as important as I thought it was, Mike, because they already guessed. So it's not like you can give anything away. Yeah, that's true. They do get yeah. to see the moment. Okay. Now, a lot of people... Uh, so first of all, so knight f5 was the right move. A lot of people that guessed h6, the problem with h6 is that when the king moves, although there's a lot of juicy checkmates that looks like it could happen, when the queen tries to get to the square g7, black can sort of plug the hole by playing f6. So if you play this move, it looks like you're going to get there for checkmate, but black can always play this move to keep your queen out of there. That's the problem. So what the very first women's world champion did was she played knight f5 check. And now here's the difference. If you don't take the knight and you think your king is going to get back, then the queen gets to the square h6. And even if she doesn't give checkmate combined with a move like rook over, there's going to be some devastation on the h file. So black decided to try to take, but after takes back, she eventually won with a beautiful checkmate, which I'm just going to show you wasn't part of the puzzle at all. Who wants to remind us what Katerina Nemsova showed us here? Jen, I'll let you call on people when I ask questions since you're kind of monitoring everything. Yeah, um, let's see. I think a lot of people um, might have been at that class and there's no, um, no shame in that and knowing an answer because you studied. Um, that's great too. Laurel, what, what do you say? Um, could it be queen takes h7 and then when the king takes you play rook to h1? Let me just hit this magic button right here. It looks like Laurel, you don't get any extra Kahoot points, but you get Fun Master Mike respect points. Very good. Black resigned because after King takes, Laurel found the way to deliver it. Mate all with check, which is important because you know your white king is actually not doing so hot. So you better do it all with check. Very nice. And now Kahoot is going to tell us who is leading after the first question. Tally up the scores. Crystal has a very short lead over high. Hi. Hi. Okay, that's going to be really that's going to be really annoying by the end of our oh, show. Oh, Rania is high. I believe you. I believe you, Rania. So, so they get they get extra points for um, being fast. Exactly, and Kahoot only shows me the top five scores. Sorry about that. Uh, you can write to Kahoot customer support if you do not like that feature. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, uh, there's our top five, and here we go. Question number two: Who was the second women's world champion of chess? It was Ludmila Rudenko, and I believe I was in St. Louis for her nomination to the World Chess Hall of Fame. I don't really remember though. Okay, you are white. Your name is Ludmila Rudenko. You are somehow still alive. I don't know how. Um, perhaps because of good karma. There you go. You play in a she was the uh, She was the one who was honored by Google Doodle for um, um, her heroic deeds and saving a train full of children during the siege of Leningrad. It's very possible I will never do something of such significance in my life. And she did say even more significant than our world championship. Yeah, story checks out, saving a train full of kids. Um, so yes, a hero and a world champion. Black's pieces abandoned her king, I know that. <laughs> okay, what was the answer? Oh, we had very good correct percentage here. I'm not great at math, but I think that's exactly four out of five. See, I'm bad at math. That's not correct. 50, 60 fifths. Jen's the poker player. She'll be doing all the percentages today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. About 80% of you or so got that right. Okay. That's when calculators were invented. 
<laughs> uh, right, that's, here to save you. That's how the kids think these days. Okay, now I am going to magically go into my library and I'm going to find this game for you because they're that all saved. Was 13, by the way, my awesome. And she was playing Mary Bruce. Okay. Um, and so all of Black's pieces, I kind of have to toggle to the moves. I'm sorry about that. It's a weakness of chess.com. Please don't write to us. We're getting enough letters as it is. Okay, there's probably a couple of different ideas here. However, bishop takes h6 is clearly the most direct. And if you play a move like rook e3, although that looks pretty tempting, one of the problems is that black could perhaps maybe trade queens because you block your bishop's access to g5. I don't know if queen g5 is the best move, but it kind of looks like it's a reasonable move. But after bishop takes h6, uh, black did not last much longer because after takes and takes, it's interesting, although there's no check, Black can't make use of her free move very easily, although Black could collect this pawn because the rook lift is really fast. And also, I'm sure you've seen this before, but there's a very common checkmating pattern with bishop and queen where I'm just gonna give Black a random move because that's what we do in the chess teacher business. You can actually check with the bishop to force the king over, come back exactly one square, and Jen's the one that taught me this, kind of maybe, um, very common yeah. checkmate. Um, so black survived a little bit longer by actually taking, or black could have taken this pawn, but the same rook lift would have happened. Black's knight moved back to stop the bishop from invading. But after rook up, there's just not enough pieces for black to defend with. And the finish to the game was pretty slow, but it works on to h5. Now white's not even down material at all. And I'm not gonna show you the finish to every single game, but you can see in this position that white's attack is still not stopping. and. Um, it's checkmate. Okay. Anyway, bishop takes h6 was the best move. And by the way, everything was confirmed by computer. So I did check to make sure that the ladies were playing the best moves. Although, Jen, correct me if I'm wrong on this. There was no computers back then. <laughs> no, no, uh, no chess analysis computers that we that, that were any good. That's for sure. Okay. That's who's leading after question two. Ananya has taken the lead. Vaya is still up there. Gaia, Rowan, and Crystal. Okay. Very cool. Question three. I might have to go a little bit faster with the answers just so we don't take forever, but we're having some fun. And here is Elizaveta Bikova. Um, all of these ladies are from the Soviet Union, by the way, until 1991. Well, not very much. All right. Yeah. She was, she, she was Czech and then lived in, played for the UK, right? Right. Russia, Czech, UK. You got it. You got the breakdown. You should write a book on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good information in my first book about Varimanchik. Okay, Black to move. She's got a really bad pawn on d6, but what did she do about it? Okay, make sure you click on something. And by the way, nobody's going to get all 20 right. Okay, so if you fall behind early, don't worry about it. If you get all 20 right, I'm going to call FIDE. You will be the official 18th women's world champion. Ooh, that one was tough. That was interesting. It's almost like a defensive move, but uh, not too many of us got that one right. Now, a lot of people picked E5, which does defend the pawn, but I want to talk about why that move is not. Okay, let me give you the black side so that you can feel like you're looking at it from the same perspective. Okay, and in this position, she played queen B6. Let's talk about why. So first of all, knight H5 doesn't do much. You just lose the pawn, I think, okay? Now, E5 is the move I think a lot of players would look at first. The problem with E5 is that D6 becomes a horrible backward pawn, and it's already being attacked several times. So it doesn't lose material. However, uh, it's just not going to be a terribly fun position to play in my estimation. Not the worst move, but not the best. Now, queen c7 is okay, but the problem is when white takes your pawn, white does it with tempo. So here's what she did. She played queen b6, and it looks like the pawn is a goner, but actually capturing it gave white a host of problems because she castled queen side. The bishop is obviously in a pin. And after the queen moved to f4, which I guess was white's idea to get out of the pin, she's able to take, 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 but white is so horribly underdeveloped. She played rook to d8, and now there's a problem because you've got certain checks and some back rank things happening. So the knight played a desperate move, but if the queen went here to stop queen check, then I have actually forgotten how a black is winning, but maybe some one of the girls can save me here. 
How is black still winning after this move? I'm gonna see which one of you raises your virtual hand here. Yeah, do the virtual hand. How about Madison? What do you think? Oh, I think I figured it out. Okay. Madison, do you have the answer? Um, I thought that maybe um, knight h5 or maybe queen d4 looked good. Yeah, I love both moves. Now, knight h5 is a little more threatening because it actually makes a threat on the queen, right? And if the, the queen does not guard this square, queen check just wins, I think, because the back rank is so weak. So if you play knight h5... Yeah, but doesn't queen have uh, f7? But we don't care. If the queen goes to f7, she lost control of this one square. Yeah. And then I think you found it, and it's checkmate. And so I've got some good news. Were, a lot of people were saying g5 also with a similar idea. Yeah, uh, I think g5 works. However, the queen gets access to this square and after check and king over, I mean, I'm sure you're winning, but there's no back rank invasion. So I would say, Jen, back me up. You're the stronger player. Knight h5 guards that square too, which makes it slightly better. Except that you could play g5, queen g3, and then uh, Knight h5, and I think they're <laughs> winning anyway because the, the queen can't stay on that line anymore. Fair so, point. Fair it's nice when one mm. move less, one move less with knight h5, right? Right. So in the game, black or white played this desperate move, but it didn't work. Um, just lost a piece. And black went on to win the game because black is up in material and position. And there we go. All right. Let's see who is leading after that really tough question. Ooh, yeah. Kayla. And Jocelyn and Ananya is still doing well, but Jocelyn and Kayla must be the two who got all three right because their scores are so much higher than everyone else. So good job, guys. I think so. I think we only have a few ladies on three. And now these are going to be a little hard today. I'm here to tell you that. But remember, if you want to, you want to be the best, you got to learn from the best. Yeah. Okay. White to move. Olga Rubsova. This is a crazy double-edged position. You are white and your king's in big trouble, but so is Black's king. Okay, make sure you guess something. You've got 13 seconds to clue in an answer. And she played, ooh, very good, ladies. Rook takes F7. I'm glad that not too many of you took the queen there. I think you probably figured out why. Okay, I'm going to hurry up and go to the correct answer. I'm um, just checking the time here, and I think we're on pace to go way over. So I'm going to go a little bit faster. And let's check out the brilliance of Olga Rubsova. She's got that crazy silent T in her name. That's enough to confuse me. Okay, so she was about to get checkmated. And I'm here to tell you, ladies, she actually was probably losing anyway in the position that I gave you. But she played the best practical choice. And I'm a big fan of that. It ended up working out, okay? Now, what you didn't see was her previous move. She played bishop e5 check. And black willingly gave away the queen. Now, for those who thought knight takes queen was best, oops, we forgot about checkmate. Knight to g3, and it would have been our opponent that had a happy dinner, not us. So she played the best practical choice, which was rook takes. Now, if the king takes, we grab the queen with check, and then white would go on to win the game. So the king's only other move was to go here. You still can't take the queen because it's still checkmate. Okay, so she took the rook to stop the checkmate. Now, in this position, Black did have a winning move. I will admit that, okay? Black had to find, well, you know what? Really quick, first girl that raises her hand, I'm gonna take one guess, and I'm gonna show you the answer if you don't get it. Raise your virtual Zoom hand. Okay, I saw Sarah's hand first. Sarah. Oh my gosh, I just raised my hand. Okay, we'll take <laughs> so, a guess. I think it's bishop to h7, check. Uh, no, it's Black's move. How could Black oh, have Black's won move, the game? Sorry. Um, Ananya, were you answering this question? Yes. Okay. okay. I was considering um, it was queen g3, I was thinking, and then pawn takes, and then um, knight takes check. And the king has access to h2 because it's a ghost piece. That pawn's not there anymore. It's a good try, though. Actually, the correct move was to not to take the knight, not to worry about the rook, not to save your bishop, but to play bishop d6. Who's going to find that? Come on. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and you can't play g3 because that pawn's pinned. Uh, you really just don't have anything in this position, I don't think. <laughs> I didn't analyze king g1, but anyway, uh, let's go back. Now, in the actual game, the queen took, and she went on to win after rook h7 because now the entire attack is gone on the h-file. 
Uh, and she actually just won because she's winning material here. So I like this because it's a good practical chance. If not rook takes f7, you have no chances. So um, I liked it. All right, let's see who is leading after question four. Kayla still 4-0? Oh, okay, we got a player here. Nice job, Kayla. Very nice. Okay, now question five is not a chess tactic. You just have to read the words on the screen. It's true, false. Here we go. If you haven't gotten a question right yet, try to get this one right. You got a 50% chance. True or false. There's never been an American who has become women's world champion. By American, I mean she, you know, has to have American citizenship or play for the American team. Okay. And if you really don't know, game theory would suggest guessing quickly <laughs> if you if you truly have no insight into the question. Jen Shahadi pays me double every time I say game theory or anything related to <laughs> <laughs> The Nash equilibrium. <laughs> That's triple. False. Ooh. There has not been, which makes my question a false question. Did I trick you on purpose? I did not mean to. I apologize. Um, now, Susan Polgar lives in the U.S. and she has played for the U.S., but neither of which were true at the point of her being world champion, as far as I know. Um, in fact, even on Wikipedia, it says that she was representing Hungary when she was world champion. So we haven't, but if we do, it'll probably be somebody on the Zoom call today. I hope so. Uh, okay, there's my explanation. There's my answer. Let's go to question number six. And uh, well, we have to figure out who's winning. Hi. Let the high jokes begin. Okay. Hi. Hi. First place. Kayla, Sarah, wow. Cicera. Honey, yeah. Good job. And who is the next women's world champion? It is the one, the only, Nona Gaprindashvili. Little known fact, if you add Vili to your last name, your rating goes up 50 points. White to move. My only hint, her move was so good, her opponent resigned. Nona Gaprindashvili, the first woman ever to be a grandmaster. Yep, and still active into her 70s. Our true boss, great player. Super competitive too. All right, we got 10 seconds left. By the way, I'm keeping the chat open except for the true and false questions because the true and false questions, it's too risky that somebody could just give away the answer. So I'm, I'm, I'm disabling it for those only. Ooh, oh. about a quarter of us got that right. Maybe even fewer than a quarter. Um, um, tough okay. question, though. I think more than a quarter, right? 22? Yeah, you're right. You're right. About a third. Okay. Let's take a look and see why Rook F5 ends the game. Save Great. analysis. Great. We're going to her final move of the game. Sheila, welcome back. Sedona, good job getting one right. This is a tough one. Um, By the way, it's so pretty. I do want to yeah, show you. I love I do want to show you the moves that she played leading up to this. She sacked her knight, then she sacked her rook. And now in this position, you could play queen takes, but that is not as clear because actually queen takes bishop and black can afford to give some material back because white has sacrificed so much. Black will actually end up with a rook and two minor pieces and might survive, but her move does not allow black to survive. Rook to f5. And the problem is if you save your queen really anyway by taking the rook, then boom, I think Maurice Ashley just had a heart attack by looking at this move. Queen takes uh -huh. h5 and uh, guess what? I don't think black's surviving any more than one more move. Queen f7 is mate. So there's just nothing that black can do here to stop the checkmate and save the queen. It is clearly a better move. Now, queen takes looks awesome, but don't forget, you can give away your queen to survive, especially when your opponent has sacrificed material. I think white would probably still win this game, but black has some material to fight with anyway. Okay, so there we go. Rook f5 was the right answer. That was your that was your brilliance from Nona Kempernishvili, the first woman to become a grandmaster. And here we go. Who is leading after this question? Cecira, Lilla, May, Ananya, and hi. Oh, wow, Cecira, good job. Now what's High's real name, Jen? Up 15 places, Violet is the highest climber. I think that it doesn't show us all of them, but the girls know what place they're in. Um, Cause some of them are putting it in the chat. So that's sweet. 
That is true. And actually at the end, it will show me as the host. But anyway, it seems like you have to have an A in your name to be doing well today. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's go to the next question. The second woman to get the Grandmaster title, Maya Chiberdonidze. Should have gotten that one right. Okay, the strength of Georgian women is showing through here. White to move. Georgia the country, although we probably have some people here from Georgia the state, do we? Uh, me? I was born in Marietta. <laughs> that was an easy one. I should have remembered that. <laughs> you, probably, you probably didn't know that. Now, what's Black doing with a missing F pawn? Doesn't she know that Fun Master Mike is going to call that one out? A missing F pawn. Don't want that. No Dutches here. It doesn't look like we have any Georgia people, except for, except for Mike. I'll represent well. We got 76 people here, but, you know, we, I think we... We have a lot of New York, California, Texas, DC, Virginia, PA. Pretty good showing a plurality of girls got that one right. Let's take a look at why Knight E4 was such a special move. Now I did make these a little bit difficult because I, I gave you a couple of knight moves, but the knight, basically I can almost answer in words, the knight plays a part in the attack on E4 that it doesn't play a part of when it goes anywhere else. So she sacked a piece and then she sacks another piece. And in this position, every girl sees the bishop wants to get here. Not only does it win the queen, it almost gives mate in a lot of variations. So the question is what to do with the knight. And the knight is important to play a part in the attack. We don't wanna to go to a passive square like this one. Knight e4 was best. And now bishop decided to guard the pawn. But if the pawn had taken the knight, that's completely out of the question because after takes, Knight here, you're just winning the entire farm after I believe this is best. Yeah, this is yeah, best. Yeah, yeah, just win the queen. You're winning too much. That makes and, life easy. Yeah, and watch how the knight plays a part in the attack because after takes, takes, she throws in a check and then after takes, she comes back and then the knight comes this way and I wish I could wow. show you everything, but the knight is clearly a part of this chess game. Um, and here white is completely winning because although two minor pieces are better than a rook, Two minor pieces are not better than a rook and three connected pawns, especially when those pieces are sitting on the back row. Um, in fact, wait a minute, I got, got the material. Yeah, yeah, rook and three pawns for two minor pieces and white went on to win. Um, I like both those king set attacks, but we need to move on. That's not the right screen. This is the right screen. Who is leading after this question? Cicera and Lila, good job ladies. Cicera, you're breaking my heart. Sorry, that was a 1970s joke. Um, let's Anya, move on. Gaia from Missouri, hello. And Sarah, great job, <laughs> top five. Very nice. You do actually have to have an A in your name to be on the leaderboard. In fact, having two A's is very helpful as well. Or three nays, as Sarah and Ananya have. Okay, let's keep going. Next question, who was world champion after Maya? It was Ji Jun. This is the part where I have Jen help me with pronunciation. I always thought it was Xia Jun, um, but we have some Chinese speakers, I think, in the chat, so maybe they can help us. Okay, I hope so. That'll be your extra credit question. Yeah, I thought, like, like you know, in, in, China, is in Mandarin, like, thank you is Xia Xia, right? I thought that was, like, the first part of Xia's name. Um, uh, somebody wants to correct us, Sidona? No, I said, nope, you are right. Xie Xie means thank you. And is Xie, Xie Jun then, yeah? Anyway, it sounds like I'm right, but I, I'll, I'll uh, you know, Google these days is really doing well with having the pronunciation of famous people's names, like, playable. So I'll check it out later to make sure I'm right. <laughs> that means we have a, a woman whose name is thank you, and we have a girl whose name is hi. They should get, they should get together and have a little uh, <laughs> pleasant greeting uh, conversation. Okay, so Miss Thank You is about to get mated. Ooh, but you found it. This is actually interesting. Even if you didn't understand it, then you might've still found it because you're gonna get mated if you don't do something with check. Um, in fact, this would have been really hard for you to see in the one minute time limit that I gave you, especially with us talking and making your life difficult. But this is so pretty. This might be the prettiest of all of the tactics. Let's move on and show you Sheshia's Thank You tactic. She's right here. Now she's playing Antoinette Stefanova. Don't forget that name. We're gonna bring it up again later. Okay, and I believe we're looking at the black side. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna skip forward very close to the end of the game. 
Okay, whose king is going to die first? If you don't give check, your king's gonna die. This is actually mate in like nine or something. I guess mate in eight now, okay? Rook takes, takes, and now watch the follow-up. Unbelievable, she sacked a second rook. I don't know why I have not featured this position in a chess kid video yet, but I'm gonna find a way to get it in a chess kid video. Okay, so that rook gets captured. Now, what could she possibly do with just a queen? Well, her queen and her pawns just work like magic here. It doesn't matter where the king goes because she's gonna play queen c3 no matter what. It doesn't matter if the king went to c1, okay? Now, you, make, you must take the rook with check. By the way, if the king went here, she would have thrown in this check to force the king back to the first rank to take the rook with check. Okay, anyway, the king went here, so she just took. Now, you still have to do everything with check. By the way, white resigned, but here's white's problem. If the king moves, she just gives check again, and then she promotes for me. And if the king moves here, then she plays this check. If the king moves here, she promotes with check. And if the king moves here, she throws in this check, and then she promotes. It's all a big geometry puzzle, but it's beautiful. And I love these sort of geometric things. Um, but if ever you needed to understand why attacking with check was important, it's this game. It's made in nine, you must give check every single move so that this doesn't happen or this doesn't happen or even this happens and they, you get the point. Okay, super awesome. And I was so glad that I actually discovered that while preparing for my day today. That's right, Who's Liliana, 4C moves. Lila, amazing, you're leading now. Sahana joins the top five and Crystal rejoins it. Um, she's, she was there earlier and she's popped back in. I love it. Thanks for the color commentary. And Sahana, you have three A's in your name. I told you that was a secret. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's well, I have on. none, Mike. I know you're <laughs> I know you're trying to <laughs> needle me here. Okay, Susan Polgar. Hopefully the one girl in the chat from Missouri will get this one since Susan lives there. I'm gonna go quiet, white to move. I tricked you. There was two correct answers. I didn't trick you. I tricked you in a good way because if you picked either one, you got credit. It doesn't matter the move order, but if you get your knight to f6, you win the game, it's beautiful. Let's take a look at this idea. Saved analysis, Miss Susan Polgar, the first woman to get the grandmaster title by getting norms. And she did some cool stuff in this game. Now in this game, amazingly, if her knight just gets to f6, she wins. If you play this first, that absolutely does work. Your rook is not hanging because what you'll do is you'll take the knight and you'll get your knight will get there. In fact, watch this. If you chose this as your winning move, this almost looks like it defends, but Maurice Ashley goes boom. And now I have to put $20 in Maurice Ashley's jar and knight F6 would win. She actually or played. Can, or you can do the, um, after you take the queen, you can take the knight. And then after he blocks the yeah, you can do that and then uh, he, will, he will take it and then Oh, it's that. check. Oh, no, it's check. Don't do it that way. Because oh, he okay. takes nice check. You're, you're, you're right and wrong at the same time. It normally would work, except it's check. Now, what she did in the game was she sacked her queen first, which I think is more beautiful. Because now, knight e4 is like a quiet move. We call it quiet. It's not so quiet. Knight f6 is mate, and you can't do anything about it. You can't even push the pawn to give your king escape. Because knight f6 is still mate, because the rook covers that square. There's simply no move for black. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. And knight f6 was the next move. All right. I love that one. I love that black got a free move and was helpless. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Salali is asking about Zuza Polgar. Yeah, that's, that was like the Hungarian version of her name, Zuza. Exactly. Beautiful. It's actually really pretty. Yeah. If you put two Cs in your name, you're a serious player. All right. Sahana has taken the lead. Wow. Came out of nowhere. Great job. And six of you have gotten three in a row. Good job. Okay, moving on. I'm uh, now Xi Jun was world champion again, but she doesn't get two two tactics. Zhu Chen. Oh, sorry. Trivia question. There are thirty seven women who have become a GM. How many are still alive? And you only get nine seconds left for this. So get this one quickly. Sorry, I don't think I gave you your full sixty seconds, but oh well. Vote, vote, vote. All right. Five of you understood. It's a trick question. Ladies, all 37 women who've become a grandmaster are still alive. It is the fountain of youth. <laughs> um, so all 37, pretty cool. They're all still with us. 
Um, and we hope that number grows, of course. Okay, so that was a bit of a trick question, but not really, I mean, it's accurate. It's kind of a neat thing to know. Okay, sorry you didn't get your full 60 seconds there. This seems to be our scoreboard. So that means right? if they become grandmaster, they'll also gain immortality? That's, yeah, why bother, you know, going around the state of Florida looking for the real fountain of youth when we already found it? Just become a GM, ladies. It only works for women though, so that's Absolutely. why we're in a good company. Yeah, men don't have nearly as good of a record as the ladies do, <laughs> okay? All right. Uh, does this, is this the updated scores? I guess it is. I think so. I, you know what? I think the top people didn't, um, I think a lot of top people didn't get this right. So they kind of just stayed the same. Fair point. Okay, moving on. Uh, now it's time for Zhu Chen. And if I said it wrong, somebody can correct me. Hopefully I remembered to give you 60 seconds on all the rest. Yeah. Okay, white to move. What did Zhu Chen do? Ooh, 15 of you got it right. Yeah, this is a positional tactic, which is kind of nice. It's not a direct checkmate threat, which is what I think makes it a little bit difficult. Uh, it's easy to think that you're gonna checkmate that black king, but she figured out that just getting rid of that bishop gave her pawns that were pretty much unstoppable, okay? See, by the way, she was playing a guy named Mark Taimanov, who was famous for playing Bobby Fischer a long time ago. Uh, and in this position, direct attacks on the king just don't work. So she sacrificed her only remaining rook. Now she's down two exchanges, or maybe that's exchange I, I'm not sure. But after pawn to d6, if you get two pawns to the seventh rank, you can defeat multiple rooks. And there's no way, and no great way, for black to be able to defend this square, except for maybe the knight. But then this bishop starts playing a part and will be able to control the square. So Mark Taimanov did go there, but he probably wanted to go back to his piano very soon after bishop takes, because uh, she actually can move in slowly. And there you go. She's just going to play here and collect all of the rooks. And she went on to win. Common idea though, sacrificing a rook for a bishop to control an important color for your pawns to become mobile. Um, by the way, this was actually from a women's versus men's match as I look to the right. Um, the women got the better of the men that game, I know that. Let's see who's leading after Zhu Chen. And it's Sahana. Nice, well Ananya and Gaia got a little bit of a pickup and Avani is the highest climber, nice work. You are white. You are Bulgarian. You need to figure out what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's white to move. I forgot to put that in the instructions here, but okay. The, the, the key to this one is you have to open the G file. That's it, okay? If you don't open the G file, you are not gonna get to the king. So if we go back to Antoinette Stefanova's game and we click on this button, when she takes, she's willing to invest a rook just to open up the file. And after takes, uh-oh, this rook is coming to g1. And after rook over, by the way, I did write down in my analysis, I'm just gonna click on analysis to save time. Uh, if the pawn takes, then she was gonna play rook check. Let me make sure I get this right. No, she was gonna play queen check. And then it all works out perfectly for Antoinette. Uh, and then of course she wins the game. Uh, in the actual game, the bishop wasn't captured, but now she's attacking for a very minimal investment of material. Uh, and you can see she was controlling this diagonal. She can work as queen around this way. And I don't have time to show you everything because we're short on time, but she went on to win. You have to trust me. All right, moving on. Sahana still in the lead. Sisira, Ananya, Gaia, Rowan, and Avani is moving up fast. You guys better look out for Avani. Here we go to the next one. Okay, I really don't know how to say this name. <laughs> Zhu Yu Hua, I think, and it is white to move. Check out your options. Rook C8, A4, bishop takes G7, or rook takes D7. What would you do here? We're past the halfway point, guys. And Zhu Yu Hua only has one A in her name, so I know you're already better than her. This one's more tactics. You don't have to worry about positional chess in this one. Find some juicy tactics. All of these moves are forcing moves, right? Captures or attacking the queen on a4. I mean, on b5 with the move a4. I like how Bia is focusing. I like how Carissa is focusing. Three I seconds left, guys. Both. I totally didn't know Carissa Yip was coming. Oh, it was rook takes knight on d7. Now, why is that the winning move? 
We're the most take... popular move. Well done, class. Yes, that was well done. Um, Should have done all tactics, maybe. Okay, and she's playing another woman you're going to hear about in the future. She's playing Anna Ushenina. And I'm going to do the really quick fast forward button. Okay, of course, Black should not have played the Kara. What was Black thinking? Now, in this position, you actually want to swap places with your bishop and your knight, but you can't do that. And even if you did, this knight would guard f6. So you sacrifice, oh, actually, sorry, this is the position. Uh, now, okay, now I've got it right. You sacrifice the rook for the knight and the king moved over, which means basically it's like resigning, you're down a piece. But if the queen had captured, now you need to move the bishop to put the knight there, but you wanna do something devastating with your bishop. So she would have sacrificed her bishop and this is complete destruction because any bishop move wins. And if takes, she would have played knight f6 and there's just no defense. There's not even a check on the white king, not a useful check anyway. That's a really, really pretty tactic. And who is leading now? Is it still Sahana? Ooh, it's always nice when you can just be number one. Three in a row, Melon back in the game and Ananya, Gaia, Rowan also creeping back up there as Aliana. I haven't seen her in the top five. So welcome to the top five, Aliana. Okay, this one's just trivia. You just have to read it. There are five women who have gone above 2,600. How many of them are Chinese? Only 13 seconds, since this is just a you know it or you don't. 10 seconds left. All right. And the answer is two, and we should probably open up the question to the chat. Who are the two? Does anybody know the names of the two Chinese women who have gone over 2,600? Uh, Jen, I'll let you call on somebody if you want. Um, yeah, somebody got it. Uh, Violet Ho Yifan and Zhu Wenjun. Very good. And the other three are Judith Polgar, Humpy Kaneru, and Anna Musichuk. That uh, is so hard. Yeah, that was kind of tough, but you know, it was multiple choice, you had a chance. Um, okay, let's move on. We've got a few ladies left, but who's leading? Ooh, Aliana using trivia to her advantage. Nice work, Aliana, your first time. Siri the pro, up 13 places. Good job, Siri. This is gonna be super close. Look how close these are. This is like a matter of like half a second difference or something. Okay, question 15. Alexandra Kostenyuk, the chess kid Russian voice. White to move. If you listen to Chess Kid in Russian, you hear Alexandra Kostinyuk's voice. Oh, she's got a great voice. Um, and here she has to choose between Queen D8 check, H4, Queen D6, or King B2. Think it over. I like how most girls are still here. We're still getting about 55, 60 answers per puzzle. Yeah, they love it. I know some might have to leave at seven, and that's okay. There will be a video, but stay if you can. Yes, she sacrificed her queen. And because so many ladies got that right in the interest of time, Jen, if it's okay with you, we'll just skip over the answer because uh, so many yeah. ladies got it right. She gave away her queen for a rook and a bishop and she had control of the dark squares and it was awesome and she destroyed her opponent. And Ananya has gone in the lead. Oh, very good. She's got three A's in her name. I'm not surprised. And Herta is back with three in a row. Aliana Sahana Gaia Rowan. And here we go. We've got about five questions left. Ho Yi Fun is black. Now she sacrificed her queen a long time ago. What did she do in this position? Bishop g2, bishop f6, knight f1, or knight g4. Good job, Ritha, on uh, getting so many right in a row. By the way, I was there when this game was played. Ah, where was it? Uh, in Gibraltar in 2017. I was also there when she lost a game in four moves. <laughs> That's a different story. Okay, let's see. She took the rook, allowing double check. How often in chess do you allow double check? Answer, not very often. If you do, you're gonna make a fun master Mike Kahoot. Here's what she did. She sacrificed her queen, like literally like 30 moves ago. And in fact, it's so long ago, I'm just gonna go ahead and click to like this position and I'm gonna turn the board upside down. Okay, so in this position, rook takes rook is double check and her king is here and she allowed it, unbelievable. And the idea is she's just gonna play h2, king takes h1, she's probably gonna promote to rook because she has style and she's gonna give checkmate. And rook takes rook doesn't work because the king simply moves. And if you get checked, you move again. 
And if you get checked, you actually get away. Unbelievable. And this pawn is going to Motown, although probably this is the most accurate move. Apologies about that. Um, and this pawn is getting to this square and basically she's getting her queen back. So it's pretty cool and it's complicated. And that's why she is Ho Yi Fun. All right, who's leading? Absolutely amazing. I think that might be my favorite so far. <laughs> really? <laughs> nice, Ananya still in the lead. Aliana Sahara, Gaia, and Sisira back on the leaderboard. Many of you are working on a three question streak. Ana Ushenana, white to move. White to move. It's very interesting. If you don't play the right move, you're going to get mated yourself. Bishop takes a two, rook takes f2, bishop takes e6, check, or queen takes e6, check. What would you do? Yeah, some of these moves lose, by the way. So <laughs> it's a fine line between winning and losing in this one. All right, five seconds. Get your votes in. Only queen takes works, and everybody got it right. It also kind of makes sense to get your queen in front of your bishop. She beat, what is it, eight-time Russian champion Peter Svidler? I don't have the stats on that, but he's won the Russian championship a million times. Eight, I think is right, yeah. Okay, and real quick, he Let's thought- Let's another one in quarantine. <laughs> Very much possible. <laughs> okay, so in this position, if you take the queen, he goes, oops. He comes back with discover check. And then, wait, did I mess up? Um, probably they can play the beautiful move rook f2 there. And you're not winning because that's kind of cool, right? Rook f3, I think we have to go, I think you have to go rook c2 check here. Uh, yeah. The prosaic, queening, you have just a you know nice position, right? Exactly. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, and of course, you don't want to take because queen takes and you get made it on g1. And bishop takes amazingly doesn't work because I believe the king is able to like run away which is pretty weird. So the correct move is queen takes and she actually just won the game because after the king moves, she gives check. And when she picks off the bishop, there are, I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now she would take the queen and there's no good discovered checks because the queen's able to take the bishop on the next turn. So she remaneuvered her queen to be able to attack the bishop so she could take the queen. It's all very complicated. If you followed even half of that, you're a better player than I am, but that's the best I can do in 10 seconds. All right, here we go. Who is leading? Aliana. Aliana by by like eight points. Oh my god, crazy! It's like nine as fast as you can blink your eyeballs. Yeah. Wow. Um, nice stuff, guys. Maria Muzichuk. Three questions left, and the last two go quick. Okay, white right. to move here. White to move. Bishop d five check. Queen d five check. Rook a one or knight e six. What would you guys do? Bishop d5 check is right. I'm not even going to go over the answer because you either win the bishop or your queen gets to a devastating diagonal and she went on to win. So we're just going to go real quick. We're going to skip over the answer to that one. And Aliana is back in the lead. Rowan, Cecira, Ananya, Crystal, and Crispin moving up in the world. Two left, two world champions to go. Uh, I'm going to have Jen say her name. <laughs> um, Tan Zhang Zi, um, uh, what's a faster and cleaner way to win? Queen G8 check or Rook G8 check? All right. So answer, uh, what's faster? Queen G8 or Rook G8? Not on uh, camera, though. In the uh, Kahoot. Sujana, no, you didn't include a question about me because I have never been women's world champion. Otherwise, I'm sure he would have found something. <laughs> That's true. I have been. <laughs> We can do a U.S. Women's Champion next time. That's a great idea. We get Carissa Yip, well, not Carissa Yip, Jennifer Yu and Irina Krosh and Nazi Pekidzi and a lot of your faves. I tricked you. Well, a lot of the girls put the rook check, but actually queen check is much stronger. Let me show you why. This is actually kind of important. You're right. The U.S. Women's Champ Kahoot would go really long because there's been so many U.S. Women's Champs. Okay, let's go over the answer here. So in this position, queen check wins. Let me show you why rook check is not so good. Because you play rook check, I'm not going to take your rook or I'll get mated. I'm going to play king here. And if you think you're winning this rook, uh-oh, check here. And brilliancy time. This is actually a forced draw. Even after rook over, this all leads to a draw. I've worked it out with the computer. You can either trust me or not. queen d3? Queen d3? Oh, no, you're still winning, yeah. In fact, you can win this position by simply collecting the queen for the two rooks. Queen d3, I actually have rook here, and then probably this wins too. But this is qu quicker. It actually is quicker. It's forced mate, and it's cleaner because black has no options. She played queen check because after rook takes, only move, right? Check. Only move is king here. And then she found the brilliant, ooh, 
peekaboo, rook a8, love it. Only one move. And then of course she promotes to queen, king moves and may, it's all forced. So it does fit the question. Remember the question is what's quicker and cleaner and it definitely is quicker. Okay. So who got that one right? Aliana is firmly in first place now. Good okay. job, Aliana. Can she hold her lead? How many? There's two questions left, is that right? There's one question left and here we go. Last oh, one, get ready with your fastest left. finger. It is a trivia question. Who is the current women's world champion? All right, this is gonna be fun. Oh, okay, we have some learning to do. Ju and June yeah, is the current women's world champion. I'm surprised it's not more actually, I thought. Ju and June, yeah, she's the current women's world champion. Ho Yifan, former women's world champion. Judah Polgar, never women's world champion because she didn't compete in very many women's events. And Irina Crush is our local hero, but never world champion. She's the eight time US women's champion. And here we go. Final scores, I'm gonna press my magic button. In third oh, place. Melon in third. Place. Melon, who is Melon? Ananya, good job. First place, drum roll. Aliana, yay, congratulations. Who's Melon, by the way? Melon came out of nowhere. I never saw her in the top five, but there you must have gotten the last couple right. Good job. Let's answer some of the questions you got. Aliana, do you have a question? Do you want to kick it off? Since Absolutely, you get to go first. Um, has should any- I, Should I start answering questions in the chat? Yeah, 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 yeah. What about the one about the, the, the most memorable um game? Woman. I will tell you my most memorable game against a woman. It's actually a very funny story. And Jen Shahadi knows the woman. So um, I don't know how to put this in a, in a way that I can do it quickly. But my very final tournament as a scholastic player was the very first Super Nationals in 1997. And it was the second to last round. And I went and checked my opponent. And I was playing someone named Groberman, Eli. And I thought, oh, I'm playing a nice little Jewish boy. And I went and sat down and a girl came and sat across from me, a girl that I know. And I knew her name was Elena. And we started talking. And before I knew it, the round began and she offered her hand and played E4 and hit my clock. And I was like, you're not Eli. <laughs> and it turns out her name is Elena, E-L-I-N-A. But because her last name is so long, it got cut off on the pairings sheet. And so I was all confused because I thought I was playing a boy, but it was a girl. On the ninth move, she already had my king on F7. Um, he had to be there, maybe. It was funny, except it wasn't because my king was on F7. So anyway, that was kind of the funniest game I had played against a girl when I thought I was playing a boy. So. Love, love it, and Alina, Alina is fantastic. Sometimes her daughter comes to these classes. By the way, uh, we do have that tournament coming up on Chess Kid. Irina and I are gonna be hosting along with Jennifer Yu. So if you haven't signed up, and we'd love to have you. There's right. even going to be and a free camp hosted by Irina Cross. Right. If you sign up before April 5th, you get a free camp with Grandmaster Irina Cross. Okay, I'm going to go quickly. Will Benzu come back to Chess Kid? I hope he does. He's a very busy guy running his own channel, though. I do hope to have some more videos from Grandmaster Ben Feingold. Has someone beat you in Chess Kid? Actually, all the time. On my very last live show, I lost my very first game. It does happen. Um, so, yeah, it, I, I lose all the time, especially when I'm talking, because I'm talking, my rating goes down. Understandable. Uh -huh. um, Via, do you want to be unmuted? Um. Yeah. Um. I have a question. Okay. Uh, my question is: Do you like over the board and like books? You know, read into study and over the board chess more than computer? Like on the computer with the chess a com chess kid, Lee chess, and all those apps. Well, which, which one's your favorite? Every time you go on chess kid, I get paid a nickel. So you tell me. <laughs> um, now, I mean, over the board chess will always be real chess to me. It's what Jen and I grew up playing. However, you have a very big advantage that we didn't have. When we wanted to practice growing up, our mom or dad had to drive us to our friend's house and we had to hope our friend had a high rating. And, you know, we only got every couple days a game. You can play games so much on the internet to get ready for over the board chess that you really can't forget about either one. All the top players are using the internet but they all think of over the board chess as what they're really training for. So you should do a combination of both. Um, Wayra said, how did chess kids start? It started a few years before I got there when um, the people at chess.com said, hey, we need a site for kids. That's how it began. Um, moving on down, who do we got? Um, um, Violet asked, how long did it take you to go from 1500 to 2000? 
Okay. Um, I actually had a very high rating as a young kid and then I did not progress very fast, but I was a 1500 in, I think second grade or third grade. Um, and then I didn't get to 2000 until about eighth grade. So it actually took me about five years. Um, but again, I didn't have as many games to play as you all did. You have so many more options. So, um, Sarah, you want to be asking on camera, what's up? So my question is, what was your most memorable tournament? My most memorable tournament would have been, well, I did win one national championship, but I was so young, I can't really call it terribly memorable. Um, I would say um, the very first time I played the World Open, I was exactly 2200, which was master level. So I had to play in the top section and I started out really poorly, but then I ended the tournament by um, winning, I think, five and a half out of six games. And I got the first place prize. And I went home, oh, first place for a certain rating, I should say. Um, and I went home and I bought a car. And I wasn't even able to drive that car off the lot because I didn't drive a stick shift. <laughs> um, but to be able to win a tournament and buy a car, as a high school kid, that was just like, my entire world was perfect at that point. If only we could have relived those years, so. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Liliana says I was North Carolina champion. I did win North Carolina champion, oh, the open championship once. I won the high school championship five times. And a lot of people ask me, what did you fail a grade? No, I won the high school championship starting in eighth grade. And then again in ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th. But I could not win the North Carolina high school championship today five times because kids are just so much better than they were back then. So because of things like chess kids. Speaking of which, Aliana did sign in to chess kid. If you want to play her in like a three minute game there. I mean, I don't know if you have time or not, if it's possible. I do. We only have uh, five minute options though, but um, I can do this. And for the girls that can stay great, if you can't stay totally cool. What's your favorite video that you ever made for chess kid? Favorite video? Probably one of the early videos when I was just getting my feet wet, something like the discovered attack video. Um, I always like that tactic more than other ones. I can't really explain why. So probably discovered attack. Annalise asks, um, you're so you work with so many kids. Have you ever considered having kids of your own? <laughs> Who put you up to this? My mom? Did she send you? <laughs> um, consider it, yes, but. I will tell you, I would not be nearly as productive on Chess Kid if I had my own kids. Jen, I don't know how you do it. You are a wonder woman. Um, but no, you guys are all my kids, kind of. Although I want you to go home at night to your own parents. Um, who am I playing? Aliana, is that right? Aliana. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, go to chesskid.com and click on Play Versus Kid. All right. Okay, I'm challenging you to a five minute game. If you could accept that challenge, I'm gonna reshare my screen. I just did. Thank you so much for your patience. Okay, it looks like you got uh, white, I got black, and Jen's gonna feed me questions as I try to play. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, more questions, guys. Um, what books do you recommend, Mike? Um, you know, I don't even know if this is in print anymore, but logical, uh, sorry, um, Practical Chess Endings by Paul Curies. It is not the most exciting book. <laughs> However, it is a book that helped me a lot in my chess. Um, one very practical endgame book is Capablanca's Best Chess Endings. There's 60 right, of his right? best endings. Well, um, I love the way that Aliana is playing here. She knows you're distracted by asking questions. So she's just going after Mike, trying to checkmate him. I Beautifully, beautiful, love to see it. Um, who's your favorite chess player? Uh, David Bronstein. Okay. Uh, if it, if you're talking about an alive player, maybe somebody creative like Bedor Jobova or something, but both Bronstein and Jobova are very creative players. Now I'm about to get mated because I did not mean to castle so early. And now I'm trying to figure out how desperate do I have to be? What if I play this move? Let me see if I can trade Queens on Aliana and uh, maybe she'll be nice and get the ladies off the board so I don't get checkmated. We'll see. Madison, Siri, Sharia, Anika, Eddie's. Um, why don't you write your um, questions in the chat? Sahana, same thing. Um, who is, is that the same? Is that the same? That's kind of a similar question, Madison. Who is your chess idol? Similar, similar answer, right? Bronstein and Jovova. Is there any kind of tweak if it's your idol, not your favorite player? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to not get made it here. Um, yeah. What was the question? Do, your chess idol. I guess that's kind of the same as your favorite player, right? 
Uh, my chess idol. I mean, Mikhail Tall would be an, like a pretty obvious answer for idol and favorite player. But yeah, it's a pretty similar question. I don't think I can distinguish between the two. Um, how do you pull yourself off after a loss? Sahana, well, apparently we're going to find out soon if he gets made it in this game. <laughs> but- yeah. I might survive. It's possible to survive this. It's not likely, but it's possible. Leave Zoom chat in a half. Well, the, <laughs> but yeah, his knight on f6 is protecting h7. So it's, you know, she, she definitely has to do some work. It's never easy, especially in a blitz game. Uh, bye, Tori. I hope you win, Aliana, she says. Very nice. Avani says, how do you stop night forks? That's a great question. <laughs> how do you stop night forks, Mike? Um, how do you stop them? Don't put your pieces where a knight can attack the two different of them. <laughs> oh, well, I, I got it. Put your pieces on the opposite color of the knight. So when the knight moves, it'll then be on the same color as the knight, and then it'll be attacking the opposite color. <laughs> All right, right. I think I think you got that right. There's a few levels there. Um, who's your inspiration to start chess, and when did you start chess? Ask Siri. My inspiration. Um, I started chess when I was four, and I wouldn't say I had an inspiration. I just uh, my parents were like, they're like, Mike, he's kind of a handful, but he's pretty smart. We really need to get him out of our hair. Maybe the chess coach will take him. Um, so I just kind of accidentally got good at it, and. Um, it was just kind of luck. My neighbor answered a, a, an advertisement in the newspaper about this guy that came to my home city of Charlotte to start some local chess clubs. And I've just kind of lucky enough to go to one of their presentations. Um, so that's, um, that's how I got started. It was kind of a happy accident. So there wasn't a big chess culture in Charlotte or anything like that. Oh my God, look at how great she's playing. Yeah. Jeez. Beautiful game so far. I love the night G3, uh, really beautifully done. Um, it is hard to be interviewed and play a talented player at the same time. Addies, what is your favorite checkmate? What's your favorite type of checkmate? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, smothered mate is always kind of pretty, but I would say any mate with a pawn. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to play any mate in this game, by the way. I'm, I've actually switched tactics here. I'm going to try to win the game on the clock. And maybe Aliana is actually, oh my goodness, she didn't even take my H pawn. Um, I was going to say, maybe Aliana lets me win on the clock. You know what? I just, I just did a YouTube video on using your opponent's pawns as shelter. So I'm going to see if I can do that in this game. I'm going to try to use the white pawn for shelter. Hopefully that works a little bit. I can't believe she didn't take my H pawn though. Unbelievable. You know, you probably shouldn't be saying all your strategies out loud. I don't know. I'm getting in her head right now. She totally should be muting me, but she's probably not muting me. So I'm just going to keep talking about her. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a chess move. Interesting move. That I did not consider. Um, meanwhile, um, if you had to play one time control for the rest of your life, what would it be? I like that question. man. <laughs> One for the rest of my life, maybe three plus two. I don't know. I'm not one of you bullet players where I can, you know, I can't move uh, as quickly as the new kids can. So let's go here and hold our breath. Um, Bernice, he answered that earlier. He talked about, well, kind of answered that earlier. He, he when you, Bernice asked, what's your favorite tactic? I think earlier you talked about the discovered attack being one of your favorite tactics because of yeah. your videos. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I have a question for the chat. How do I survive this? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Although I wasn't expecting the um, Rook H5 move. So. I wasn't expecting any of these moves, to be honest with you. So before that, I, I really, really felt good. Now I'm not as sure, but we'll find out. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Bishop C4 earlier, Cicero. That's what I was looking at, too. Just don't get mated, says Molina. Oh, that's that's good advice. Always repeat. <laughs> what's, now, somebody, GS asks, what's your advice to 1,200? Uh, I mean, if you're not knowing the 1,200, I would say you have to improve a lot at tactics. Um, I'm in the same boat as a lot of other top players. I don't believe that in-depth opening study is terribly important. Um I believe tactics and understanding how to transition to winning end games. 
would be my advice. In fact, I remember having a conversation with my coach when I was in high school and he'd coached me for like eight, nine years. And I asked him, I was like, what's the best part of my game? I was fishing for a compliment. Um, and he looks at me and he's like, Mike, you get in a lot of really horrible positions, <laughs> but you always find a way to get out of it. So sometimes tenacity is important, but at the 1200 level, I would say tactics. Um, oh, geez, I have no idea. Can I play knight here and hold my breath again? Everybody's holding their breath today. Um, okay, let's go here. And... Uh, go Aliana, says everybody. Go Aliana. 39 I feel, seconds. I feel better here than I did three moves ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hmm. Okay, I can do that. There's not a lot of things that white's doing to me at the moment. Maybe I can actually not trade rooks and just play here. Am I making a Philly mistake though? Okay, I had the chance to trade rooks, but I took, I passed it by. I'm just basically rushing every piece I can toward my king. It's not a very elaborate defense. Uh oh, yeah, Aliana, I'm not going to tease you anymore about your about confusing you. You do need to play a little bit quicker. I don't want you to lose yeah. any time. Um, Cicero asks, "What's your advice for 1800?" Because at that point, you know, they could have plateaued on tactics, right? They might have done a, a lot of tactics at 1800. Um, advice for 1800s. Uh, it's such a general question. It's a very hard one to answer without knowing the actual student. Um, I guess you need to learn some positional chess concepts a little bit better. Um, that would be my answer without really knowing the player. Um, I would say also if you're a kid and you've mostly learned online, it might be a good time to check out some books. Um, yeah. Just, just because sometimes you hit a plateau if you do all the same thing. So, you know try something new, or if you usually learn from books, maybe try more online tools, like just try something different because they're 18 is a pretty good rating. There's a good chance you've done a lot of great things and you might want to like, you know, twist things up a little bit. Yeah, well done. I mean, I know obviously I want people to go online because I work for a website, but um, I got to where I am by not having really any online games. So you can see by my speed here, that's very apparent. Okay, now I can breathe a little bit, but not a ton. I need to consolidate without allowing counterplay. That's what I teach the kids. Okay, if I move my king, your rook starts invading. So I'm gonna <laughs> put my rook here. I do try to teach not to allow counterplay, although it looks like I'm allowing some counterplay. Yeah, not okay, I not. think I can go. Um, can you? Okay, some things are happening that are positive. Let's just grab this one while we can. Some people are asking. Um, you could have took the rook. You could have taken the rook. Oh, yeah. indeed, I could have. You're right. Ooh. Um, increment in there, Mr. Mike. What's that? How much increment in your game? There's a one second increment. Nice. Um, wow. We got some questions about what advice do you give for people who play in open um, in under 16 tournaments, the open section, not the girl section. My mom says I should do that like Judith Polgar did. Yeah, I mean, I always played up as a kid, except for tournaments that really mattered like nationals. I was always trying to play pretty much the top section. So I'm very much in favor of it, especially if your goal is not just to get a little bit better at chess, but to get a lot better. You should play up as high as possible. Um, okay, I'm just doing a little bit. I don't want to give away my advantage with a silly pawn move. So sometimes when you do nothing, <laughs> you do something. Okay, so your bishop went there, got it. Okay, but now my king's a little bit closer to the action. So I'm going to go here and see what happens. Bishop first knight, um, somebody asks, is it possible to be a GM if you're 10 years old and 900? Um, well, you know, nothing's impossible. That's for sure. 
you know? I mean, yeah, you just, you have to, it's, it really requires a lot of dedication, right? Um, and devotion. But yeah, I agree with you. Wouldn't call it impossible. You guys are all still so young. Um, Allison, your advice for 1100s, you did talk about tactics for 1200s. So probably it's going to be pretty similar for 1100. Those ratings are very close to each other. Um, and 800 also similar, the same thing. Dang it. Ooh, oh my goodness. Don't say dang it. You just gave me the a ride I wasn't looking for. You played for. so good, Aliana. Aliana, I, I was like about to resign against you on move 12. I thought she was going to win. I thought so, too. So what? She already won. Re remember how yeah. I, my coach said I get you out of the game? You played uh, really well, Aliana. Yes, good job, Aliana. Can you good send job, the, Aliana. Can you send us the game somehow, Mike? Uh, copy, paste it to me. I so. can. Yeah, I bow to you. And like my coach said, I got in a lot of really rotten positions. So I kind of know how to hang on for dear life. And that's sometimes what you have to do as a strong player is just not lose and see if you can make a comeback. You played really well, Alia, and I, you were really good. And the entire game, I felt like you were going to win, which is really good sign for you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Anika. Really took advantage of his king in the opening war. You yeah, were brilliant. like the second coming of Jen Shahadi. Throw the H pawn down the board and come check, baby. I think she beat me a lot as a kid on some blitz games that way. Yeah, Aliana, it was also particularly brilliant because Mike was distracted by answering the questions. And it's like a really hard opening to meet in those circumstances. So your chess psychology was totally on point as well. So very well done, Aliana, for winning the trivia. Good job also to Melina who came third and Ananya and everybody who played and a big, big thank you to Mike for putting that together. It was so much fun, such great examples. Um, you know, th this was the, the girls absolutely loved it. I can hear the, uh, the comments coming in and I I've heard them all day. Somebody earlier said like best Thursday night ever. So uh, they, they, they're not in college yet. So they don't know about like the, the fact that it's like the three day weekend and Thursday night is, <laughs> So, but so far, best Thursday night so far. That's a great compliment. That was so much fun. I, I wish I could have given you more funny answers at the end there, but you have Aliana to blame. She took me to the mat and I just barely hung on. But this was so fun to be a part of. And I think you're all such very talented, strong women. And I look forward to seeing you at the next Over the Board Nationals, whenever that may be. Come say hi to me at the Chess Kid booth. There will be one in addition to the U.S. Chess Women's booth. And uh, Jen, this is just so fun to be a part of. It was so fun. And I hope to see a bunch of you at the April 17th tournament. I'm sure Mike will make an appearance there. I know some of you are already Reg. By the way, I will answer one last question because I know the answer to this. Why are you fun master Mike? Actually, you can answer it real quick. You have this one memorized. <laughs> I do. Well, I would tell you a long time ago, I was teaching at a camp that was almost all grandmasters, a few international masters. And I was like the only FM, which is one step below both of those. And an eight-year-old boy came up to me and he's like, hey, what does FM stand for? And I didn't want to tell him the truth because it involves a, a French acronym and it's a whole story that's quite boring. So in a moment of just, just like 8 a.m., haven't had my coffee, a little bit frustrated, I'm like, FM, that stands for Fun Master. And then I was like, yeah, Fun Master, that's my name now. Um, so when I started working at Chess Kid, they're like, what do you want to be called? And I'm like, well, I want to be Fun Master Mike. So uh, that's, that's kind of how it happens. Sometimes your best ideas come at eight o'clock in the morning when you aren't even expecting it.